Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here. Um, so today is going to be a little bit different of a video. Uh, this one's not going to be too long. I promise no more than 15 minutes, maybe even less. I want to answer some questions about my carriers that I've been getting on my Discord and on the just the video comments for basically the last two months. Like where are my carriers and where are they going? Well, you know where they're at now, but maybe you'd like to know the thought process as to why they... Uh, how they got here and why. So let's start from the beginning. And I'll use the map to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. So at the beginning of the campaign, uh, our we had two carriers out at sea, somewhere in this area here, okay? We had the uh, Lexington and the Enterprise. So right from the start, I knew that we had to dodge the Kilo Butai leaving Hawaii. And they typically retreat this way, more or less. Um, so I had the intent to have the Enterprise and the Lexington form up at Laysan Island head due north, due east, and due south of Pearl Harbor, which would, should effectively dodge the Kiru Butai returning. But what happened early in our campaign, as you may recall, is that I clicked the wrong button or I did the wrong command because I was still learning the game. And I sent the uh, Lexington to Laysan Island to meet the Enterprise, but they did not meet. It just stayed there. And the Kiru Butai came driving through here and destroyed the Lexington on, on the 10th of December. Lodrick was very kind to let me replay the turn and fix the mistake after I showed him screenshots of what I was trying to do and where my carriers were at. Uh, and I got my mulligan, and we saved the Lexington. And, you know, we'd be talking about an entirely different battle today if I did not have the Lexington present for the carrier attack we just experienced. But what happened then is I successfully got them to the link up. The Lexington and, uh, Enterprise went due north, due east, and due south into Pearl Harbor, and I left them there. Uh, also, right afterwards, I grabbed the Saratoga, which was basically on the e west coast of the United States, and I brought that too to Pearl Harbor, where I had my three carriers now sitting in Pearl, uh, getting fixed up. Uh, I had to pull the aircraft off and put them in the, um, the bases, right, to help train them up. And during that time, it was about a week, I was starting to think about what I wanted to do with my carriers. And I knew for a fact, wherever they were going to go, they needed to be together. Because the Kido Butai cannot be taken on piecemeal. You must hit them with everything you've got. And even then, that's not even a guarantee. So whatever we were going to do, I knew I needed all four of my carriers, which I'd have early in the war, together to fight. So um, where, do I, where did I want to fight? Well, I really had two main options. Well, okay, there's three. A lot of people like to do raids, like they like to raid the Marshall Islands, right? Uh, and then they like to maybe come up to Hokkaido or northern Japan and do a raid here, okay? That's one option. I didn't like that option because to me, a raid isn't, it doesn't, it, 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 it's just a pinprick. It doesn't really change anything. And I wanted my carriers to come on hard and come on strong and make a decisive entrance into the war. And this kind of thing coming up here, striking the resources or hunting a couple convoy ships is not what I was looking for. Same in the Marshall Islands. Not a lot of stuff out here worth hitting. Okay, there may be some ships in Kwajalein and some aircraft at Roy Namur, but it's, it's, it's not enough. And all that does is kind of spill the beans as to where our carriers are at. Um... It, and, and then he knows where we're not at, and he can be stronger there. So I immediately discounted the thought of doing raids. I was like, nope, not good enough. I want a decisive entrance. So what's another option? Uh, South Pacific? Uh, yes, that is. Australia, yes. But here's what I'm thinking. The Japanese player can go for these places, which obviously Lodric is operating out here, right? But there's not a ton of points out here, and everything is very isolated. And um, on top of that, it's very far from his supply lines, right? The further you go south, the further you are from Japan, the harder it is to keep these bases in supply, right? And Australia, yes, you can attack it, but I felt like we were very strong on the East Coast where he wasn't going to be able to land safely. And anywhere else in Australia is so isolated, it takes too long to move around. So I felt the main threat was actually here. Because, uh, for one, I wanted to continue to be successful in China... And for, to be successful in China, you need to keep the Burma Road open. So that means I need Rangoon. I need all these bases. Um, by land, he could take it. But 
it would be better if he had a naval assist on that, right? And also, if he takes Burma, he can start taking all these bases in, um, you know, in India. And there's a lot of points here, and they're all close together. The terrain is good, and it's not too far away from the supply lines, right? You have Indochina nearby. You have um, Singapore nearby. You've got Japan not too far. You can just dump stuff into Saigon and rail it in and move it up the road. So I decided that I wanted to be strong in India with my carriers. I wanted to fight back here because, to me, this was the most likely place for him to be successful and, and, and auto-victory me by 1943. So I committed to move all of my carriers to India to prevent a naval attack on Ceylon, to prevent an invasion of India by the sea, and to assist Burma in fighting on the ground. That was my decision, and I made that decision about a week into my campaign. So, the next part was, how do I get them there? So, you, as you may recall, by about a week or two in, I had the uh, three of the four carriers. I had the Saratoga, the Lexington, and the Enterprise at Pearl getting ready to go with all the supporting ships. Like 20 destroyers, 10 cruisers. I sent uh, some, uh, at least one AO at uh, Euler, right? I had them ready to go. But I was trying to time their departure with the arrival of the Yorktown, which you get on the West Coast, I don't know, a couple, two, three weeks into the campaign. I, I don't remember exactly what it was. So what I wanted to do is try to coordinate them so that they would be arriving at a similar time in India. Maybe not exactly because I didn't want to waste time linking them up. So a few days out from when the Lexington was supposed to spawn in over here, I started the carriers moving due south and then across to make sure we avoided any subs. And then they cut over this way, went off map, refueled at Balboa, and then started the long trek over to Cape Town, which is on the other side of the map. That took a long time. But as the Allied player, you have these off map movements. You can move your ships at full speed, and they don't really take any penalties. So I did that because you can do that. Uh, also, I took the Yorktown and I had it move over with some uh, some Sims class destroyers that I left in San Diego, and it also went off map into the penalty box, uh, into Balboa, and over towards Cape Town. But it was about a week behind the other carriers, just because of the timing that thing wings, the way things worked out. When the main task force I had got to Cape Town, I sent it off map to on map. It came out around here. And I decided to send it to Bombay. So, my carriers, three of the four, plus a ton of escort ships, I mean, like, a lot, uh, came on map some time ago. Not, well, not some time ago. Maybe, a, I don't know, a week or two ago, if that. It's uh, this, The timing's been very tight on this whole thing. And our, in the meantime, I had Bombay ready to accept them. I had the... Where is it? I had the base built up to a port level 6. I had the airfield built up to 7. And I dumped in a ton of, uh, um, what do you call it, these HQs with the air support. I had about 300 plus um, aviation support ready to go. Because as soon as the carriers arrived here, I disbanded them in port. I put them in the shipyard. I got all the damage from the sailing fixed. And I put all the aircraft into Bombay to start training and doing last minute preparation. And about a week after that is when the Yorktown was about to arrive. But um, right around that time when the Yorktown was about to come on map, uh, this whole area just got super hot, right? Now, Lodric had been operating in here for some time with some cruiser task forces and stuff. But it, it was kind of recently that he committed carriers to this area. And you recall what brought him out, right? I sent the Indomitable, the British, the British carrier, right? I decided to send it on a little sortie down here to attempt to stop this, this little task force that Lodric had operating here, taking all these bases, right? Uh, the intent was to stay wide, and then cut in and attack. But I did not direct my ships right, and the. Carrier kind of got too close to here and got spotted by a Jake float plane and it really threw everything off I got spooked and I was like I was no longer comfortable Pressing further south and now that he knew that I was there 
he would have his land-based aircraft attacking me, and we didn't have enough aircraft to defend against that. So I turned around, headed back to Ceylon, but that's when we saw these guys come up this way, right? And he chased us all the way to Ceylon, and then he launched that ill-fated uh, fighter sweep where he lost the 20-something zeros. But once I saw that carrier task force coming, I knew it was my time to move. And like this is, if I'm going to make it a move, this is it. Uh, this is when I want my carriers to come into play. But I had to move them from Bombay down to Cochin because I wanted to make sure they were topped off with fuel before we went into the Bay of Bengal because I did I could not afford to be spotted. The key thing to this whole thing was that the carriers had to remain unnoticed and unseen until it was time to strike. And you guys know I've been very tight-lipped about what, where they were. I've been very careful about moving the camera around so you guys wouldn't see where they were at. I wanted total secrecy because OPSEC is crucial to this type of thing. I'm not saying Lodrick watches these videos and my moderators have not reported anybody cheating in his uh, private Discord area. But still, you never know. And it was super important for me to protect the secrecy of my carriers. So, what I did was I moved the carriers and, and just enough escorts to get them there safely to Cochin. I had a second task force, as you can see here, uh, made up with an additional set of, of cruisers that I brought over from Hawaii. And this is like the, the backup team. But I didn't want the task force to be too big because then you run the risk of collisions and it just gets a little ungainly. So three carriers, some cruisers, and some escorts got to Cochin. And then I had the uh, Yorktown come down and join them. And the Yorktown basically ditched all of its escorts and just joined in with the other three carriers. And from there, this was the routing that I decided to take to engage Lodric. So I'm going to use this task force to kind of demonstrate what I was doing. So let's say that's where we were trying to go. Okay, This was the routing that I elected to take. Because it was so important to me that we not get sighted. I think it was about down to here. Okay, so I routed the, the carriers down this way because I did not want to go anywhere near Ceylon because of these subs. I wasn't sure if any of these were full plane equipped or not. I couldn't risk it. So we actually went kind of wide. It, you know what? It was more like this. Watch. It was like this. Yeah, I went even wider. Okay. And now, granted... I had all four carriers together with their escorts, and we went down this way and cut across. And this was the closest I came to probably getting sighted, because this was our last lone position before we jumped off. Um, and what I did was I got the carriers down to here, and then I full speed to this position that we're at now. He was about here, and he drifted two more hexes further north than the next turn. Um, and that's when we hit him. And it, you saw how that went, and it went pretty good. So that's basically the story of how my I decided where to move my carriers and how I got them here. Um, again, some takeaways from this that I think I did well was I was very secretive about this, and no one knew where these carriers were at except for very few people that I implicitly trusted. And I won't tell you who those were, but I told basically no one. And you'll notice that sometimes, like the last couple days of my videos, when I'm talking about the Indian Ocean, it was kind of like this, right? Y'all notice that? Or, or even like this, where I would be talking about Ceylon, but you couldn't see over here near um, Cochin or even south of Ceylon because I did not want anybody to know where my carriers were at because they were basically right on the edge here. So you'll notice if you watch back the last couple videos that I was getting a little weird with my camera angles here, and that's why. Because I did not want anybody to know what was about to come. And you know what? We pulled it off. Complete secrecy. We caught Lodric completely by surprise. We cut off his, his escape route. And, you know, the rest is history. These guys are, are toast. They're done for. Well, I appreciate you guys listening to me. I tried to keep it around 15 minutes. But uh, I just want to explain the story and how I got my carriers here. So I hope you enjoyed listening to it. I enjoyed telling it. It was a good fish story, right? Uh, and the rest is history. I think uh, we've set the tone for the remainder of our campaign and how we're going to do things. And we've now basically eliminated the entire threat by sea of the Japanese Navy interfering with Burma and India. If he wants to come up this way, 
he's going to have to bring all the big boys that are down near the South Pacific, right? The rest of the Kido Butai, which is everything except the uh, Kaga, they're still very potent. And I still don't think I can take them with all four of these carriers even being intact. So, But that's a major commitment for him to move his carriers up here. If he wants to be strong here, that means he has to give up all of this. And I'll tell you what, the second that I know that his carriers are down here, aren't down here, we're going to go on the offensive because we won't be obstructed by carriers. We can start reinforcing Luganville. We can even take in Denny, maybe go for Tulagi, do some raiding up here, you name it, because if there's no carrier threat, we can be strong because we still have good surface assets out here. So it's a win-win for me how this turned out. Um, and I'm really excited about what we accomplished and the path that I took to do this. So thanks for listening to me ramble on. I hope you enjoyed me explaining this. Uh, I got the last turn, the latest turn from Lodric. I'll be reviewing it tonight, and we'll see what happens with the remainder of this campaign. I really hope that we aren't going to be the victim of sudden carrier loss syndrome, but, you know, I, I, I'm not Lodric, and I can't get in his head, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. That's all I got to say. Uh, thanks for watching this, guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.